Well, um, the idea came by way of Transit Books because they were inaugurating a series of long-form essays. Um, and they got wind of my lecture from another uh, writer, Maria Tumarkin, and asked if I would be willing to expand it into a small book. I had originally delivered the lecture on the lecture. <laughs> spring um, writing festival at Ohio University, their literary festival, where I was asked to give a reading and a lecture. And I've been wanting to address the lecture for a while, so I thought, well, this is my perfect opportunity. I'm really interested in, um, in questioning the nature of the very forms by which we come to know things. And so any sort of form that we sort of tacitly agree to accept and live inside of, but haven't really questioned the sort of power dynamics, for example, that are kept in place by those forms or the assumptions that those forms reproduce or the ways in which those forms position us as passive or active. And um, the lecture in particular um, is something I've been wanting to think about. I was thinking before talking to you about this question of, you know, if there are recent lectures that I have heard that I really loved. And I came to think about conversations with my mother, to tell you the truth. Um, phone conversations now and FaceTime conversations and Zoom conversations. But I realized the last time I was talking to her that my mother speaks essayistically. And when you talk to her, um, her conversations move uh, between and among music, she often sings something, um, she recites poetry as it is apropos to our conversation, she takes the pulse of the day, she shares her observations, she listens with humor, and, and, and she moves among and between these forms. <laughs> and it's conversation, but whenever I'm on the phone with my mom, I, I sometimes feel like, right, I do actually sometimes write down the things she's saying and, and imagine making making these things that she's she's put together into essays. She is a poet, so I should maybe mention that. But I guess I want to draw attention to that conversation as a model for a lecture because I'm also interested in, in thinking about um, different sources for lectures and the places we normally think to go. Yeah, I think that what sucks people asking questions at lectures, unfortunately, is um, the effect of K through 12 education. As well-minded and, and wonderful as many of our teachers have been in K through 12, um, they're just forces that they can't necessarily fight against that have to do with rendering students passive and um, taking mandating that, for example, students stop using the word I in an essay. I have to uneducate my students often. And so when you're trained to remove yourself from the equation and begin to think that what it means to be a student is to have information poured into your funnel head, then I think that um, you begin to think of your teachers as unerring authorities rather than as people who are um, who are your inspirers and your guides and who may, may certainly know more than you, but maybe they know differently than you a lot of the time.